Story number one. Valentine's Day was supposed to be a celebration of our love. A day when my girlfriend Sarah and I would escape the monotony of our daily routines for a romantic adventure in the city. We had planned it down to the last detail. A cozy dinner at her favorite Italian restaurant, followed by a moonlit walk through the old botanical gardens, a place where we had shared many magnificent moments in our relationship. However, the day unfolded into a chilling narrative that neither of us could have anticipated, transforming our day of love into a night of unspeakable fear. Our evening began with laughter and the exchange of heartfelt gifts, the air between us filled with the anticipation of the hours ahead. Dinner was a symphony of flavors and affectionate glances, a perfect start to what was meant to be the highlight of our Valentine's Day. As we left the restaurant, hand in hand, the night air felt crisp and invigorating, carrying with it the promise of a memorable end to our celebration. The botanical gardens were deserted, a private sanctuary bathed in the silver glow of the full moon. We wandered through the maze of paths, admiring the silhouettes of exotic plants and the fragrant aroma of blooming flowers. It was here, in the heart of the garden, that our night took a terrifying turn. A sudden rustling from the shadows caught our attention, and we assumed it was just the wind or a small animal. But then, the rustling grew louder, more deliberate, accompanied by a faint whispering that seemed to call Sarah's name. Instinctively, we clung to each other, peering into the darkness for the source of the whispers. That's when we saw it, a figure draped in tattered robes, its face obscured by darkness, standing at the edge of the path. Frozen in fear, we watched as it pointed a gnarled finger at Sarah. The whispering grew louder, more insistent. Without thinking, I stepped in front of her, demanding to know who or what it was. The figure remained silent for a moment before disappearing into the night with an eerie lap that echoed through the garden. The encounter left us shaken, and we hurried back to the safety of the city, the romantic allure of the gardens now tainted by our frightful experience. In the days that followed, Sarah and I struggled to make sense of what we had seen. Research into the history of the botanical gardens revealed a forgotten legend about a jilted lover who, heartbroken and mad with grief, had vanished into the gardens, never to be seen again, vowing to haunt the place of his deepest sorrow. Valentine's Day, a day that was meant to celebrate our love, had exposed us to a nightmare that lingered in our thoughts. A stark reminder that some places are best left unvisited after dark. Our love remained strong, but the shadow of that night haunted us. A chilling memory of a Valentine's Day where love and terror intertwined in the most unexpected of ways. Story number two. Valentine's Day had always been a simple affair for Ciara and me, preferring the quiet comfort of each other's company over grand gestures. This year, however, we decided to celebrate with a late night walk back from our favorite downtown restaurant, a cozy little place known for its intimate atmosphere and exquisite cuisine. The city, alive with the soft glow of street lamps and the distant murmur of celebrations, offered the perfect backdrop for our leisure strolled home. It was a clear, cold night and the streets were unusually empty, as if the city itself had decided to give us a moment of solitude. As we walked, our conversation flowed from plans for the future to reflections on the moments that had defined our relationship. It was during one of these exchanges that we first noticed the car, an older, nondescript model that seemed to be taking the same turns we were its presence an unsettling echo in the empty streets. At first we joked about it, creating elaborate backstories for our quote-unquote follower, but the humor quickly drained away as the car continued in its silent pursuit, never overtaking us, but always there, constant shadow just at the edge of our awareness. Our route took us through a less populated part of town. The buildings here were older and the street lights fewer and further between. The car's presence became more menacing in the dim light. Its intentions unclear but increasingly ominous. Sierra's grip on my hand tightened, her earlier amusement replaced by a palpable tension. We quickened our pace, turning down a street that would lead us away from our apartment but towards a more populated area. It was then that the car finally made its move, accelerating suddenly, pulling up beside us. The windows were tinted, obscuring the driver, but the message was clear. We were not alone and our sense of safety was an illusion. 
In a moment of fear-induced clarity, I remembered a 24-hour convenience store a few blocks away, a beacon of light and safety. We ran, the car following for a moment before peeling away into the night, leaving us to the sound of our own racing hearts. Reaching the store, we paused to catch our breath. The brightly lit interior and the sight of a few late-night shoppers grounding us back in reality. We shared a look, a mix of relief and lingering fear, and decided to wait it out until we felt safe enough to make the quick dash home. That night, which was meant to be a celebration of our love, became a stark reminder of our vulnerability. The experience shook us, serving as a chilling counterpoint to the warmth and affection we had set out to celebrate. In the days that followed, we found comfort in each other, grateful for the safety we had once taken for granted. Our Valentine's Day story is shared testament to the unexpected turns life can take. This incident, while devoid of overt horror, was a chilling encounter with the potential dangers that can lurk in the most mundane of moments, turning a night of celebration into one of survival and escape. Story number three. Valentine's Day was meant to be a testament to our love, but instead, it became a night that pushed the limits of our courage and togetherness. Nicole and I had planned an evening that combined the comfort of familiarity with the excitement of the city's vibrant nightlife, concluding with a leisurely stroll through its illuminated streets. The air was alive with the spirit of the occasion, echoing with joy and the melodies of celebration from every corner. Our journey led us into a quieter, more secluded section of the city, one we weren't as acquainted with but still felt safe traversing due to the lingering festivity. As we engaged in plans and dreams, a sudden darkness enveloped a portion of our path ahead. The streetlights, one after another, flickered out, leaving us in an unexpected shadow. With a shrug, we pressed on, our phone screens casting a small circle of light around us. It was then we became aware of an additional set of footsteps, distinct and accelerating, echoing off the pavement behind us. At first, we dismissed it as another late-night wanderer, but the sound intensified, morphing into the unmistakable cadence of someone running towards us. A quick glance over our shoulders revealed a shadowy figure, their intentions unreadable in the enveloping darkness, charging in our direction. The instinctual fear that gripped us was immediate and visceral. This was not a benign passerby or an evening jogger, but a deliberate pursuer. In a moment of panic, Nicole clutched my hand tightly and we bolted, adrenaline fueling our flight. The pursuer's footsteps a relentless soundtrack to our escape. We veered into an alley, hoping to evade our follower, our lungs burning with the cold night air. Emerging onto a brighter, populated street, we didn't dare slow down until we were certain we were no longer being followed, turning back only to see the figure halt at the mouth of the alley, standing ominously still before turning away into the night. Shaken, we made our way home. The night's earlier joy replaced with a heightened awareness of every shadow and sound. Our Valentine's Day celebration was overshadowed by the harrowing experience, leaving us to ponder the fragility of safety and the unpredictable nature of danger. Back in the safety of our home, with the doors securely locked, Nicole and I found solace in each other's presence, processing the night's events together. The scare had undeniably drawn us closer, a shared ordeal that, while terrifying, reinforced our mutual support and dependence. Yet, it also imprinted a lingering caution in our hearts, a reminder of the darkness that can lurk beneath the veneer of festive occasions. This experience became our most unforgettable Valentine's Day, not for the reasons we had hoped, but for a stark encounter with fear that tested our bond. It was a night that underscored the essence of love, not just in the sharing of joy, but in facing and overcoming the shadows together hand in hand. Story number four. Our Valentine's Day began under the cloak of excitement as Lisa and I ventured into the city's heart, eager to enjoy an evening that promised the simple joy of each other's company. The streets, alive with the buzz of others celebrating, seemed to mirror our high spirits. Yet, as we strolled through a less crowded alley, aiming to take a shortcut to our favorite bistro, the night took a harrowing turn. Without warning, two figures emerged from the shadows. Their approach, swift and silent. Before I could react, one of them had me pinned against the wall, his accomplice rifling through my pockets. The attack was so sudden, so unexpected, that it left me reeling. My attempts to fend them off futile against their determined assault. Lisa's screams for help pierced the night, 
a desperate plea that seemed to go unheard in the secluded alley. The robbers made off with my wallet, watch, and Lisa's purse, leaving us shaken and bruised in the cold embrace of the alleyway. As we reported the incident to the police, the reality of our violated evening set in, casting a dark shadow over what was supposed to be a celebration of our love. In the days that followed, we struggled to make sense of the attack, the randomness of it leaving us with more questions than answers. But it was a call from the police that unraveled the mystery, turning our bewilderment into disbelief. The investigation had led them to one of the culprits, and through him, to the mastermind behind our Valentine's Day nightmare. None other than the ex-fiance of Lisa. The revelation was shocking. It appeared that, unable to move past their broken engagement, he had orchestrated the attack in a twisted bid for revenge, targeting Lisa through me to inflict pain and fear. The realization that our assailant was someone connected to Lisa's past added a layer of personal violation to the already traumatic experience. The aftermath of that night lingered long after our physical wounds had healed. Lisa and I grappled with the betrayal, the deliberate malice behind the attack, a stark reminder of how deeply the tendrils of past relationships can entwine themselves in the present. Yet it was through facing this ordeal together that our bond deepened, our resolve to overcome the shadows of our past solidifying. Valentine's Day, intended as a celebration of our budding relationship, became a testament to our resilience. The encounter with Lisa's ex-fiance, while terrifying, ultimately failed to achieve its intended purpose. Instead of driving us apart, it drew us closer, our shared experience a painful yet powerful affirmation of our commitment to each other. In the end, what was meant to harm us became a catalyst for growth, a harrowing chapter in our story that, instead of ending and tragedy reinforced our unity and determination to face whatever challenges lay ahead together. Story number five. For Valentine's Day, I decided to surprise my girlfriend, Natalie, with a dinner at her favorite restaurant. A cozy spot nestled in the heart of the city, known for its intimate atmosphere and exceptional cuisine. The evening was crisp, the streets alive with the energy of couples celebrating, and I felt the sense of contentment knowing that I had planned something special for us. As we enjoyed our meal, immersed in conversation and laughter, I noticed Natalie's smile fade slightly as she glanced over my shoulder. Turning to look, I saw nothing out of the ordinary, just other diners engrossed in their own celebration. What's wrong? I asked, concerned. Natalie hesitated before responding. I thought I saw someone I used to know. Someone I'd rather forget, she murmured, her gaze lingering on the entrance. Her vague answer piqued my curiosity, but I didn't press further, not wanting to spoil our evening. The moment passed and we continued our dinner, but there was a subtle shift in the air. Natalie seemed distracted. Her glances towards the entrance became more frequent. It was then I felt it too, a prickling sensation on the back of my neck, the unsettling feeling of being watched. Determined to shake off the unease, I suggested we take a walk after dinner, hoping the fresh air would dispel the growing tension. Natalie agreed, and we stepped out into the night, the city's lights a comforting presence around us. We hadn't gone far when I noticed a figure trailing us from a distance. At first, I told myself it was a coincidence, but as we changed our route several times, the figure persisted always keeping to the shadows. The realization that we were being followed sent a surge of adrenaline through me. Let's head back to the restaurant, I said, trying to keep my voice steady, not wanting to alarm Natalie further. She nodded, picking up on my urgency without a word. Once back inside, I spoke quietly to the manager explaining the situation. He was quick to act, escorting us through the kitchen and out a back exit where he had a cab waiting to take us home. The relief of escaping our follower was palpable, but it was tinged with fear of the unknown. Who had been following us? And why? The ride home was quiet, both of us lost in our thoughts, the night's events casting a long shadow over what was supposed to be a celebration of our love. Once safe in our apartment, Natalie opened up about her past, about an obsessive ex-partner who had trouble letting go. We realized that what had started out as a romantic evening had inadvertently exposed us to a threat neither of us had anticipated. Valentine's Day ended with a promise to each other that we would face this challenge together, a testament to our bond and determination to protect our peace. It was a sobering reminder that sometimes the past could reach out with a chilling grip, threatening to disrupt the present. But in facing that fear together, we found a deeper sense of unity and strength in our relationship.